everybody. Hi. No, I hid those. <sighs> Not gonna know. No, Dabby, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? I told you I wouldn't play with a pen. This is true. I hid those. <laughs> oh, oh, Lord. Hey. Hey, hi. Welcome to the Natasha and Debbie show. Hello. That's brutal. This, this two patriotic girls. So please don't take us the wrong way. Hi. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Natasha and Debbie show. But that's Debbie and I'm Natasha. That's right. I'm me. Here so you. It's, today it's the Debbie and Natasha show. <laughs> since you said it. There you go. I don't know. I'm totally confused. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're glad that you've joined us. Uh, today we're going to do our Travel Wednesday. We're going to go explore some of England. What we're, area are we're we going? We're going to the Cotswolds finally. Woohoo! Finally. So, join us. Get ready. We're going to take a trip. Um, but before we do, please make sure you like and subscribe. But, but before you subscribe, yeah, before you subscribe, make sure you go back and check out uh, the rest of our material and videos. We don't want people to subscribe based off just one video. We want you to be in it for the long haul with us, right, Debs? That's right. Stick around, join the family. Uh, but before we get going, a couple things. Um, we want to thank everybody over at Patreon for supporting us, all yes. of our patrons. And we want to give a shout out to some of those patrons right now. So we want to thank you. Um, and we do thank all of you. So, but right now, let's give out some uh, thank yous to some of our patrons. And we're going to start off with, and I'm, we're going to mispronounce some names. I yeah. get glasses. Yeah, there. we're going to mispronounce <laughs> some names, and we apologize for that. So, we're going to start off with trying to pronounce these appropriate. So, uh, firstly, I want to thank uh, Talitha Vile. Uh, Sarah McComb. Lucy Lewis. Becky Riddle. Or Riddell, whichever. Uh, Helen Watts. Uh, William Birch. Mel McGar. Where'd she go? Steve Holford. We have it written down so we don't mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> Susan Marsh. Andrew Deacon. Emma McLean or McLean? I'm not sure which. And Mary Dickinson. We thank you all. Those thank are just you. some of our patrons. Um, we appreciate you guys so much. Um, thank you so much for, for joining us over on Patreon, getting exclusive content. Um, and we want to say this too. Uh, we've talked about changing the tiers up a little bit each month. Mm -hmm. So what we have for January is just for January right now. Now we'll keep the first tier the same, yes. but we might change the other two. If you have ideas of what you'd like to see in the Patreon as I, of things that, you know, exclusive content wise, mm -hmm. let us know in the comments. Let's get into this video today. This is on the Cotswolds. And uh, this one's actually called the most beautiful English villages. And it's a part mm -hmm. one of two, I believe. Um, but due to time issues, we can't do both parts. Let's get into this. Check it out. I'm excited to see it. I know you are too. Yes. We've been wanting to see this really, really badly, but um, let's go to the Cotswolds. Here we go. In this video, we'll show you some of the prettiest villages, historical properties, and the oldest pub in England. Oh. Let's get started right here in Castlecombe. We're in the Cotswolds. We are in the Cotswolds. We are. And I'm already alone. The Cotswolds <laughs> is an expanse of sloping green hills and ancient picturesque towns and villages two hours west of London. It is designated an area of outstanding natural beauty and its quintessentially wow, English charm spans six counties, predominantly Whoa. Gloucestershire and Oxfordshire. The tiny village of Castle Coombe is our first stop and it has been called the prettiest village in England. Let's see what. Fairy tale cottages, a parish church, and a few pubs adorn this sleepy village, frozen in time and unchanged since the 1600s. Whoa. The honey-colored limestone brickwork, synonymous with the Cotswolds, give a warming glow even on a cloudy day. As with many villages, parking is restricted, and you'll need to use the free car park at the top of the village and walk down, or try your luck with a few roadside spaces a little closer. <laughs> I 
I got you too. The focal point. <laughs> well, we are never going to get used to that, are we? You caught me off guard there. <laughs> I, I mean, I know it's the other side of the road. Hmm. It just catches me off guard still. Yeah, I'm with you. Especially when we're actually in the car moving and the traffic coming in. <laughs> but what I'm saying so far is very, very cute. It's so picturesque. And it's that's absolutely stunning. Virtually untouched in 1600. That's oh, insane. That's just amazing. Oh, wow. So beautiful. Okay, let's go back in. <clears throat> Okay, hopefully there's no more driving. <laughs> you point of the village, the 14th century medieval market cross monument was sadly boarded up for repairs. Hmm. But you might recognize this area as used in Steven Spielberg's 2010 film War Horse. Another notable movie filmed in the village was the 1967 hit Dr. Doolittle with Rex Harrison. rectory tea room and gift shop. Cream teas are available, but only if you pre-book. With all of our locations, we'll put links in the description to help you. One of the classic and most photographed locations in the village is down on Water Lane and the weaver's cottages that hug the By Brook. Back in the 15th century, weavers were deemed of high status for the felt work they accomplished on the cloth used in soldiers' uniforms. They could therefore pick prime property locations near rivers due to the water they needed as part of the fulling process. This used hot water and agitation to shrink the wool into felted garments. Apparently one of the properties was home to the Blanket Brothers and it's believed to be the- I am in love with this place. Sorry. It's beautiful, but I have a question. Can you go back to that? To what? I don't want to mess it up. What do you want? Back to that water. That back to that water. Saying. Yeah, right there. Okay. okay. Why are there steps leading into the river? Why are there steps? <laughs> did people walk down there and bathe? Good or, question. Or did, I'm sure they probably did at one point. I don't but think they do now. I No. <laughs> if you do, send a photo. I'm is kidding. there like boat mooring? But I would think it would have a dock. So I, I just don't understand the steps actually going down. I, I don't know. Into the water. Is it shallow enough to just walk across? Maybe. I'm going to say no. <laughs> it's not shallow enough. <laughs> Let us know in the comments. <laughs> that is just, I have to say, I, I'm, I'm just being, I'm speechless. I'm not, you guys know I'm not speechless. But I'm just looking at church. this church. And the church was absolutely stunning. The stained glass. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, the little tea room. It's everything about this so far. I was trying to read the menu. I did too. I caught Parmesan fries. I was looking at fish and chips. <laughs> I was trying to see what kind of fish it was. Um, but uh, it's just... It's just absolutely beautiful, and I just don't really have the words right now to say it. It's just it I think we all, as people, you know, have a tendency to take things for granted in life. Yeah. And um, like where we live, no matter where that is, some people live in tropical islands that are gorgeous, and mm -hmm. others, and where it doesn't matter. But um, you know, I think and, and you guys watching that have been here, that have been lucky enough to be here, or even maybe you live nearby, I think you might take it for granted. You know, this yeah. to us is just such a beautiful, uh, idyllic place, like you said, fairy tale. You know, mm -hmm. it's just stunning to know that this is a real place where people actually, like, get to go and be and hang out and yeah. possibly live and work. And it's just... I'm sure somebody lives right there in that red door. Maybe. Um, I mean, I don't know if those are homes or if those are 
what they are, but um, either way, it's just absolutely stunning. So, and I can't wait to get back in. I know. Let's see some more. Let's do it. He was starting to say something. Though. I'm going to back that up just a little bit. Yes. This used hot water and agitation to shrink the wool into felted garments. Apparently, one of the properties was home to the Blanket Brothers, and it's believed to be the birthplace of the blanket. What? What? That's odd. I want a blanket from the cloth walls. Driving the country lanes can be an adventure. No, Stepping no. just off the main More road, driving. the narrow lanes can catch you out with oncoming traffic We're or locals yet. walking their dogs. Oh, so take care and drive slowly, especially if you're used to driving on the other side of the road. We stopped. Stopping, I'm fine with stopping. Oh, beautiful. Driving through the imposing gates, we have arrived at Durham Park, part Durham of the Park. National Trust collection, and the 17th century house, garden, and deer park. Entry is free to members, as is parking. Otherwise, entry is £13.50 for adults and £6.75 for children. Not bad. Due to the recent bad weather and flooding in the UK, the parklands were closed to allow it time to recover. But walking down the sweeping path to the mansion, keep an eye out for the fallow deer that roam the estate. So we've just parked the car. Where are we, son? Durham Park. Is it Durham? Durham Park. It's a National Trust property. The car park is somewhere over that hill. And then you have to walk. It's about a 15 minute walk down to the main house. Uh, we did see a little courtesy bus, but I don't know where that's got now. So we're walking. It Hold on. is windy. There's a courtesy bus. They saw it, but they decided to just walk. Y'all know how much I love walking. <laughs> Especially that wind. Yeah, no, take the bus, dude. And then they warned you, watch out for the deer. Yeah, I heard so that too. So you get attacked by a deer. <laughs> It's a deer bark. <laughs> Just see if that deer running over. <laughs> knock you over. <laughs> Back to the video. Oh no, I'm cold. <laughs> Ooh. There's a bus! Get in the bus! <laughs> it's free. Thank you, bus drivers. All day. That looks like they had a lot, quite a bit of rain. Yeah, that was two years ago. Whoa. The elegant Baroque house comes into view, and you can imagine the horse and carts trekking down the track to bring guests for elaborate dinners or social events. Wow. Wow. That's beautiful. Those walls could talk. The National Trust, the custodians of the property, are in the midst of a £10 million renovation and preservation project Good. to ensure future generations can enjoy the estate. It's worth checking the National Trust website for details of what areas are closed at any given time for Whoa. work to be carried out. Oh, look at that. The property was created by William Braithwaite in the 17th century, and the grounds are extensive. The gardens oh, wow. are quite spectacular, and I imagine in spring and summer, with better weather, quite beautiful. That's just a chair, it looks beautiful now. Why do I know the, um, why do I know the name William Braithwaite? Why do I know that? Why do I know that? <laughs> Don't ask me. Do you know that? Uh, it sounds familiar. I know. But, I feel stupid now. Um, do, why do I know that? Yeah. I Let me know why I know that. Somebody tell me why I know that. <laughs> I have a question. Uh, did somebody live here at some point? Well, yeah. Like this was somebody's house? I'm assuming so. Because, wow. What the hell is that? That to be your house? Well, it's like the Biltmore estate we have here. That oh, was no. a house for people that Gloria Vanderbilt lived in. So, yeah. Um, But the fact that he said, oh, it may look even better and other weather, I'm like, it, it, it's fine. It looks absolutely stunning in this weather. Are you kidding it is me? It's stunning. Ah. Look, that's just stunning. Absolutely stunning. That's the word I'm going to use for the day. Stunning. <laughs> Keep track. So pretty.
<clears throat> Overall, this is a delightful property to visit during your stay in the Cotswolds. I would say. Good call on the bus. <laughs> Told ya. <laughs> Oh, more driving. <laughs> oh, look at that. Just... I love the stones. Yes. Wow. So pretty. The 19th century artist and craftsman William Morris called Bybury the most beautiful village in England when he visited it. The village is known for its 17th century stone cottages Whoa with steeply pitched roofs oh, and the yeah. famous Arlington Row Weavers Cottages, which supplied cloth to the nearby Arlington Mill. Oh, wow. Parking can be tricky here, with very few spaces in this chocolate box village developed long before the motor car. Wow. Look at that bridge. The US car manufacturer Henry Ford thought Arlington Row was an icon of England. On a trip to the Cotswolds, he tried to buy the entire row of houses to ship back to Michigan so that he could include them in Greenfield Village Museum. Luckily for us, his bid was unsuccessful. He did, however, manage to purchase Rose Cottage in the 1930s from the village of Chedworth so a small piece of the Cotswolds made its way to America. Well, I wish he hadn't done that, though. Right. I can see why he wanted to, though. I have to say this. I'm just, um... Mm, I'm emotional watching this, and I don't know why. It's just the, the beauty, I think, of it all. This is exactly what um, I think a lot of Americans picture England to look like. Yes. Would you agree with that? Yes. Like, this is what we think, you know, I think in our heads. And I know that's this is not representative. There are, you know, mm -hmm. modern cities and things like that. But this is just what my soul kind of craves. Yeah. You know, I had said in the Lake District video that we did just last last Wednesday that that's kind of what, um, you know, I think it was that video. It might have been the one we did. It was one of the ones. I don't know. Um, but I think it was Lake District that I said, this is kind of what I picture heaven to look like yeah and I, I stand by that statement mm -hmm. um but when i think of like you know england and the way that you know americans would think of it we think of you as i think in our heads we think more of the history the yeah. older days and we think of this you know yeah. we, we think of the movies that are of the 16th mm -hmm. century and things like that yeah the older buildings the yeah. cobblestone yeah like drives it's and just walkways. this is just absolutely gorgeous and yeah. i'm so thankful we did this video i hope you're enjoying it as much as we are Bybury has provided the backdrop of blockbuster films including Stardust and Bridget Jones Diary. See, I just said it. Look at that, though. Love the screams. Oh, that eye. Look at the moss and the rocks. Yeah. The bridges. I'm obsessed with this place. It's supposed to be done very well. Walking in a loop along the pretty paths by the river, Arlington Mill appears. Okay. This is now a private residence, but once housed a museum with a collection of period costumes produced by the Arlington weavers that lived in the cottages we wow, just showed you. So beautiful! Right there! I want to live there. <laughs> <laughs> I want to walk, walk... Wow! <laughs> Hold on. Hold on, sir. That's awesome. I don't have words for that. Everything in this in this screenshot right here. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little gondola. I don't need a gondola. I got everything I need <laughs> right in this picture. I don't. Look at the, the building in back there and the stuff growing, mm -hmm. you know, the ivy and the different stuff growing up yep. on the building. Um, I mean, the water, it's just perfect. It is pretty perfect. It's just absolutely beautiful. Oh, sorry. Tasha's moving in. I am. I'm, I'm coming. Get my bags <laughs> ready. Get, my, get me a spot, someplace that I want to come. So pretty. Bybury should definitely not be missed on your Cotswold tour. You're just be pointing the entire video. 
Hey, it's Indiana. <laughs> Burford is a small medieval town in West Oxfordshire and is often referred to as the southern gateway to the Cotswolds as people arrive from the east on the A40 from Oxford. Ooh, I want to go shopping. The long sloping high street is a mix of pretty cottages and ancient shops that have changed little since the Tudor times. There are numerous tea rooms, craft stores, pubs and antique shops aplenty to entice you. Don't miss out on the side streets, which have charming, cute stores to view. Oh, I'm not going to miss out. <laughs> going in every place. I'm not walking. Don't care. I'll walk the cool stuff. Hey, doggy. The 15th century Paris Church of St. John the Baptist is magnificent and well preserved. Work started back in the 12th century, originally funded by wealthy local farmers and merchants that had been successful in the local wool trade. They believed that making these donations would seal a place in heaven. The lengthy restoration of the church took place in the 1870s, bringing criticism from William Morris. The vicar at the time responded, the church, sir, is mine, and if I choose to, I shall stand on my head in it. This inspired William Morris to establish the Society for the Protection of Ancient Buildings. The elaborate tomb of St. Lawrence Tanfield and his wife can be viewed in the North Chapel. Oh. Tanfield was a prominent lawyer and politician who established a country seat in Burford in the 1580s. However, his reputation for corruption and harshness with tenants was remembered long after he died. The church has some beautiful architecture and stained glass windows <laughs> and we highly recommend visiting on your walk around Burford. Duh. <laughs> wow. wonder how old some of those are. Next time in part two of this video we visit oh, more stunning villages, two. a motor museum, the oldest pub in England. Alrighty. We're going to definitely watch part two on our own. I'm just sorry for time. We don't have enough time. Yeah. Um, in this episode to get both parts in, which is unfortunate. I could watch this all day, and I can uh, assure you, can we watch the next part as soon as we're done with this video? Yeah. Okay, thank you. We're going to finish that. <laughs> I have to find all the candy. Um, <laughs> I just want to see as much as I can see. So we're definitely going to watch part two um, when we're finished here. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as we did. I am absolutely just... Yeah, that was stunning. Uh, totally amazing. Just, just what I wanted to see. One yeah. of the small small villages and towns. All the small villages that make mm -hmm. up the, the area of the Cotswolds. It's just, oh my I mean, gosh. Where the blanket started. I mean, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, I now want a blanket from the Cotswolds. So then we got the blanket place and the pencil place. <laughs> Sorry, what now? <laughs> she found it again. <laughs> hmm. Oops. Well, I hope you guys did like the video. Uh, before, we're not quite done yet, but before we go, um, please like the video if you did like it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wish there was a love button. I'd go hit it on our own video. And uh, consider subscribing to the channel um, if you choose to. And uh, check us out on Patreon as well. That's right. But, um, you know, what? I, I don't know what to say other than I'm just in love with the Cotswolds. Um, it's, it's definitely a beautiful place, and I just... If we lived anywhere near there, I think we'd be going all the time. Mm -hmm. That'd be like... Yeah. Yeah. I think based on our two video, two travel videos we've done specific areas, I, I would pick Cotswolds over the Lake District. So far, based on the videos that we've seen, no, that doesn't mean that in person, Lake District might be better. Who knows? I'm not picking. You're not going to pick yet? No, I'm not going to pick, period, because I want to see all of it. So I'm not making... Well, duh, I want to see it all, too. I I'm, I'm going to leave you <laughs> in... in... <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, my lips. Look, I painted my nails too. Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah. So one thing I will say is we get comments all the time about people asking what kinds of things would could we send Debbie in your PO box? Because you all know I love I love Queen. I love Freddie Mercury. I love anything with the Union flag or any flag on it. I um, still haven't received a uh, Union flag hoodie <laughs> or any sweatshirt or T-shirt. I appreciate anything, everything from you guys. But Debbie, I think we figured out what Debbie could could use. Props of any kind. Any some, toy. Some bits and bobs. <laughs> it's 
some knickknacks, <laughs> some toys. She wants toys. Some funny things. Some funny things to annoy me with. <laughs> and to amuse and entertain you guys with, apparently. Yeah. This was a wonderful intro for us to the Cotswolds, and mm -hmm. we are just loving doing these travel videos. So, um, in the comments, we have a question for you. Next Wednesday on Travel Travel Wednesday's episode, yes. where do you want us to go? Um, I had one place, I had two places in mind, but I don't know if I should say that or if I should let you guys just put in the comments. We'll just read and see. Um, so I, I think I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Yeah, let's have them tell us. Yeah, you tell us where you want us to go next Wednesday. Um, I have a couple ideas already in my head, but we'll wait and see what you say in the comments. Mm -hmm. And I think one of them is going to be actually in the comments quite a bit. So yeah, just let us know in the comments what you think. And again, thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We will see you again on Sunday for a totally different episode. That's right. All right, guys. You have a great rest of your day. And we're going to go watch part two of this Cost Falls episode. Until next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.